Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. If you like all things true crime, if you like it delivered in a peaceful, tranquil manner, if you like it clear and concise without drama, then I highly recommend you subscribe. And if you like what you hear, please smash the like button. It's a free way you can help. And now, without further ado, let's dig in. Jay Slater's mother, Debbie Duncan, has shared that the local cafe owner, Ophelia Medina Hernandez, who supposedly told Jay there would be no bus until 10 a.m., one, doesn't speak a word of English, and two, she was very cold toward Jay's family and put her hand in front of her face when Jay's brother, Zach, tried to speak to her. Why would this woman be so cold toward the family of a young man who met with such a tragic fate? This sort of blow-off behavior isn't a good look for Ophelia. I had already found her a strange character because she knew Jay wanted to head down the mountain and yet when she saw him take a wrong turn and head up the mountain, she didn't take the time to tell him. Think about that. Had she done that, it's possible Jay would still be alive. Just a small little intervention like that to direct him to the right path might have saved his life. I mean, wouldn't you do that if you had an interaction with someone especially a young guy who clearly didn't know his way around Tenerife. It would have taken maybe a minute or two, or even less if Ophelia had just used her hand to point him in the right direction. Now we hear that she wouldn't even try to talk to Jay's family. Sorry, but that is suspicious behavior. Is she friendly with Ayub, Kasim, and Rocky? because they rented her Airbnb? Is she protecting them from further scrutiny by the family? Or does she have something to hide? Should we take Ophelia's coldness as another clue as to what might have really gone down in Moscow? Jay's mom is also questioning why his friend Lucy May Law didn't race to his aid after Jay spoke to her that morning. From what Lucy said, Jay was desperate at that point for a drink of water, and he was bleeding, and he was lost. Debbie Duncan told the Sun newspaper, quote, It has left me thinking, well, you knew his location. Well, why didn't you just go to him? Why didn't you just go? There are taxis everywhere, and she could have just gone. When I spoke to her, I was saying thanks for what you've done. Thanks for reporting him missing, obviously not knowing anything else, end quote. I made a video asking that same question. If Lucy cared so much about Jay, why didn't she immediately head to Mosca? Was she too tired after partying at the rave? I think that this is a valid question. You mean to tell me Lucy couldn't have been bothered to drop everything and rush to Jay's aid and possibly get to him? before he sustained those fatal injuries, and yet she has the wherewithal to set up the GoFundMe and make it a big one, striving for 30,000 pounds. Perhaps this really is why Lucy and Brandon were seen outside the chapel during Jay's funeral. Maybe Lucy wants to avoid Jay's parents and their questions, or maybe the family has made it clear they're not pleased with her inaction on the one day Jay really needed her. And if Lucy did know Ayub, Kasim, and Rocky before Jay met them, why can't she tell Jay's family why Jay likely went to Moscow? At this point, fear of getting in trouble should be cast aside in favor of helping Jay's family get a complete picture of what actually happened. Remember, Lucy said in her GoFundMe for Jay's family, that Jay called her at 8.30 a.m., saying he was lost, hurt, and thirsty. And she also stated that she was searching for Jay in the middle of the night. Why did it take her until nighttime to search for Jay? Do you mean to tell me that she waited all day Monday from 8.30 until whatever the middle of the night means to her to go out there and look for Jay? 
It would have been pitch black out there. No one in their right mind would go off onto that trail in the middle of the night. And she should have searched was in the morning right after he called her. It would have been warm. The sun would have been out, making it possible to see where she was going, making it possible to navigate the dirt path in that park. I find it hard to believe that Lucy went out there at night. Even Jay wasn't that crazy. He supposedly waited until the morning. The reason we continue to talk about this case is because of stuff like this, stuff that doesn't make sense. Even Jay's mother still feels that a lot of the details don't make sense. She was emphatic that Jay would never leave anywhere without his phone charged. Either Jay was out of his mind on some substance or there's another reason why he left the Airbnb with his phone not charged. Maybe Ayub is lying about offering Jay a charger. Perhaps there was a strong desire on Jay's part to flee both the Airbnb and Mosca. But why? I keep wondering if Ayub and Rocky did something to Jay that made him uncomfortable, or did Jay take something from them? that he knew they'd be upset about. Ayub conveniently says that he, Rocky, and Jay all went straight to bed, which of course makes no sense. We know Jay had a place to stay in Los Cristianos, and even if he lost the key, he could have tried sleeping on the beach on one of those lounge chairs. Debbie Duncan has other questions that also continue to torment her. She wants to know why did Jay get into the car with the two men that he didn't know rather than a friend. What's the real reason that Jay left their Airbnb without charging his phone? Why did he head up the mountain when he left rather than down toward civilization? I think it's also interesting to consider the questions that Debbie Duncan is not asking and maybe there's a reason for that. She didn't ask why wasn't Jay wearing his clothing when his body was found. Could it be because Jay had his clothes on when his body was found? And perhaps that bit about him having his clothes next to him was simply a poorly worded sentence in a newspaper article? I don't believe law enforcement has confirmed that Jay's clothes were found next to him. I think all of this came out of that one sentence in a newspaper article and people are 100% believing that it's true when it might not be true. Another question that Debbie Duncan didn't ask was why was Jay's phone wiped clean? Is it possible that the reason she didn't ask that question is because his phone was not wiped clean? This is another rumor that has not been verified by law enforcement, yet people are running with it as if it's a fact. Another question that Debbie Duncan didn't ask was who else was standing on the steps of the Airbnb with Jay wrapped in that blanket. Could it be because the pattern in the fabric of that blanket makes it look like there might be painted toenails next to Jay's shoes? Try as I might, I never saw another foot there, and yet people are saying that there's definitely another foot next to Jay's shoes. They speak as if it's a fact. Well, guess what? It's not a fact necessarily. It's speculation. Here's another question that Debbie Duncan isn't asking. What happened to the crossbody bag that Jay had around his body at the Papagayo Beach Club? Is it possible that that black bag was found with Jay's body? Is that why she's not asking, where is the black bag? Could this be yet another rumor that some creators are running with as fact? It would be good if somebody from law enforcement could either confirm or deny these rumors. Here's another question that Debbie Duncan didn't ask. She didn't ask if Lucy works for drug dealers, and is that how she pays for all these trips that she takes? Inquiring minds want to know. For me, true crime is about getting to the truth. It involves speculation, yes, but it also requires creators to make it clear what is speculation, what is unverified rumor, 
and what is verified fact. I'm going to leave you with a little tribute that Brad Hargreaves left for Jay on his Instagram. And I'll see you next time on Bed Crime Stories.